In this video, I want to introduce you to the Advanced Maker experience for the ALM Accelerator for Power Platform. The first time you open the application, you will be asked to select the maker environment in which you want to be working on. Don't worry, the next time you open the application, it will actually remember the last environment you were working on and open that one directly. Let's choose, in my case, Contoso COE New Dev. Once your environment has been open, you will get a list of all the unmanaged solutions that exist within this environment that you can work with. The first thing you want to do is assign a profile to the solution that you want to be working on. Do realize in this list, there are solutions that have a solution profile already assigned to them, which allows you to use all the functionality of the accelerator, although some of them don't. So let's go ahead and choose a profile for this solution. Solution profiles allow us to do a couple of things. First of all, it associates a solution to a given organization project and repository within DevOps. And it also specifies and dictates which environments the solution can be deployed into. Notice your administrator has pre-created some solution profiles for you and giving you access to them to use them. Although as an advanced maker, you can also go ahead and create new ones if needed. I am gonna choose this COE starter kit profile. This profile would associate my solution to this organization project and repository, and it would also allow me to deploy into these environments here. Let me hit save to associate this profile with my solution. Once the solution is associated to the profile, the two links below the solution name will become active. The first one is a quick link to open your solution within the Solution Explorer to perform changes to it. And the second one is to configure the deployment settings. We will talk a bit more about deployment settings when talking about committing the solution. You can get to the same screen from both places. The commit solution functionality allows you to save the changes that you've done in your solution to the repository that you have associated through the selected profile. When committing a solution, you will be able to enter the notes for these changes, which would be used as the commit message within the repository. As an advanced maker, you're also able to choose whether you want to create a new branch, providing the name and which other branch you want to base that creation on or simply choosing an existing branch in the repository. For this example, I'm gonna enter a test message for my commit, and I'm gonna be pushing these changes to an existing branch. Next thing I'll do is I'll press this prepare button. And this is gonna basically take me to a screen where I will be able to configure the deployment settings for my solution. The tool is basically right now analyzing the different components that are part of the solution and will basically render them in here for us to be able to configure those. Once in the screen, we're gonna to need to select which environment we wanna configure the deployment settings for. Uh, these environments here will basically be the ones configured within your solution profile. You're gonna be able to configure four things as part of this process, which are the connection references and environment variables, the app sharing and the component ownership. Within the connection references, you will be able to configure, again, which connection reference you wanna use for the different connections that you have. You can choose from existing ones in the environment, or you can also create new ones by hitting this plus button. Through the environment variables, you can configure the value for the different environment variables that your solution has. The app sharing will allow you to decide who you want to be sharing the different applications that your solution has with whom. This can be teams or users, and you can also specify the level of access that they're going to have. And then within the component ownership tab, you will be able to choose who is the owner for which of these components, especially useful for things like Power Automate, where performance plan for the flow is determined by the owner of the flow itself. Once we've chosen these values, we can hit save and close. This will take us back to the previous screen where we previously clicked on that prepare button, which as you can see right now has changed to commit solution. The tool is now versioning all the changes that we've performed in the solution into version control. And it's doing this in the background, utilizing the different pipelines that have been configured within Azure DevOps. You have a progress indicator, basically lets you know that something is occurring in the background. And as an advanced maker, you should have access to click the status button, which will take you to the pipeline execution to understand what's going on. Once our pipeline commits the changes, you will see the indicator telling you that everything has gone right. If we open the pipeline again, you can see that the execution of it was successful. 
The next step here would be to now deploy our solution into a different environment, which can either be the validation, test, or production environment. So let me walk you through that. To deploy your solution into another environment, hit the Deploy Solution button. This will open a side pane through which you will be able to configure the deployment of the solution. You can see which is the selected profile that you have associated to the solution before, and you're able to insert a title and some notes that will be utilized in DevOps. You're able to choose which environment you want to deploy your solution into. Since you're an advanced maker, you're also able to choose some advanced settings. If you're familiar with the Azure DevOps terminology, by utilizing the advanced settings, what you can see here is that you're able to choose the source and target branch for the pull request that the tool will create for you. So depending on what you choose, you would either create a pull request that once everyone reviews it and accepts it, and it's completed, will then trigger the pipelines that are necessary to start the deployment of the solution into the destination environment, or will trigger the pipeline to deploy the solution into the target environment that you choose here. Depending on how that is configured in DevOps, you might or not need an administrator to go in and approve the execution of that pipeline. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to target my test environment, and I'm going to deploy the solution by hitting the Deploy Solution button. As it happens, before when we were committing our solution, the status indicator this time around for the deployment of the solution shows there is some work going on on the background. In this case, because of the profile that we selected, the approval type to move or deploy your solution into test requires you to go through a pull request. So if I press this status indicator, you can see that we have here a pull request. Once all the reviewers and everyone that is required to basically look into this pull request, complete their work, you can further approve it and complete the pull request, initiate the different pipelines that will be triggered after this to initiate the deployment. As you introduce new changes to your solution, we recommend that you iterate over this process of committing and deploying your solution to the different environments to either test or validate your changes. As an advanced maker, there's other functionality you can take advantage of within the ALM accelerator, such as the delete solution functionality. This creates a managed version of your solution and imports it into the same environment and then deletes it. So it's able to remove all the components that you have created and introduced within your unmanaged solution. After deleting the solution, you might want to start from a known given state. And that's where the import solution functionality comes in handy. Hit the import solution button, and this will allow you to choose the profile which will connect you to the organization project and repository you want to be importing in from. And then it allows you to choose the solution source, which is the branch within your Azure DevOps repository, the solution folder where your changes or the last changes that you committed into that repository and that branch are in, and then the given configuration that you created previously as well. By hitting this import solution, we would be importing the, again, last known state that you have within your source control. You also have the possibility to view all the different actions that have been performed over this solution by hitting the right chevron that you have here. This list shows all the different actions that have been performed within the solution. It lets you know who has performed this action, the destination of it, and what kind of action has this been. You also have the status indicators for each of these actions, so you can see if either it succeeded, it failed, or it's still in progress. And as we saw in the main screen, these status indicators are actual links that will take you to the DevOps uh, page that will show you the progress or the status of the pipeline execution or the pull request. So this has been the walkthrough for the Advanced Maker experience within the ALM Accelerator. We hope you like it, you enjoy it, and if you have any feedback, any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to the team.